I'm here with two representatives of the city of Tartu, which we'll explain where it is in a moment. One of the strange things about the European city of culture is that it started with Florence and Athens and Paris, and now it's places like Tartu. So perhaps, Christina, as a representative of that city, you could start by telling me where Tartu is. Uh, yes, hello everybody. Tartu is, um, is in the uh, northern parts of Europe, on the edge of Europe, uh, uh, right under Finland, right next to Russia. Uh, you can imagine that uh, that situation there at the moment. So we're, we're tucked away a bit, bit up, more from, far from Florence. And how big a town is it? We have about uh, 100,000 inhabitants. Uh, but uh, but uh, the whole southern Estonia region covers a quarter of the inhabitants, basically. And Tartu is um, uh, you know, a place that is not thought of as European capital of culture. Why did you want to be it? We wanted to uh, give a new uh, new breath to the cultural life in in Tartu in Estonia. On the whole because uh, it's very easy to become this kind of uh, quiet slow nice tiny cozy uh, place uh, that has uh, a lot of cultural heritage that uh, is uh, safely kind of uh, uh, working into itself more but uh, we see that um, the title of European capital of culture gives us the uh, the validation to be more uh, broad, be more open to Europe, to the world, to uh, define our place in the in the cultural world. And what are the artistic strong points of the city? I mean, who comes from there that we will know about? Well, we have a very strong uh, literary heritage uh, in in Tartu, but. Uh, uh, something that uh, Maria could talk about is our very strong uh, uh, choir music and folk dancing heritage dating back uh, centuries and uh, and this is something uh, something that we can offer to the world our our heritage our our uniqueness and conductors violinists pianists who can who's from there uh, from Tartu uh, we have Estonian uh, musicians, very yes. very well known. So Arvo Pärt is one of the uh, top names in the world at the moment. Everybody everybody knows them. We have Belo Dormis. We have uh, we have a lot of young talents uh, entering the uh, European music space. So uh, cellist uh, Marcel uh, Kitz and, and so and on. And Arvo Pärt, of course, is one of the you know probably. Well, I think one of the two or three best known composers in the world now. I mean, mm -hmm. how much of his music will be in the in the program of the festival? Do you think with her? Uh, the song and dance festival uh, doesn't have anything currently from Arvo Robert in the in the repertoire uh, because a lot of his work is uh, very like high culture, so to say. But uh, there there is uh, this one song from him. Um, Ukorvars, which I think every Estonian knows and every mm -hmm. Estonian, you know, has danced to or, or listened to, and and, uh, and so he's also very ingrained into our uh, like this folk uh, culture tradition and carries that in his music. Um, but with Tartu, what's special about Tartu is that uh, it's a university city. So we have had a university there for a long time, and because of that, and thanks to that, it's also been a cultural center of Estonia. And uh, because we have a lot of academic people, we have a lot of students. Uh, Tartu is the only three-genre theatre in Estonia, uh, Theatre Vanemuine, which is also the first theatre in Estonia, uh, which combines drama, opera and ballet, which isn't often seen, uh, not just in, in Estonia, but also um, in, in Europe. So uh, we have a lot of uh, very talented uh, artists coming to the city to perform thanks to that. What's the relationship with Tallinn? I mean, do you see yourself as rivals with Tallinn or do you see yourselves as a, 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 as a different sort of culture and life in Estonia? Uh, I, I think it's more symbiotic than that because Estonia is so small that we, we share uh, the resources. So, uh, and in that also the audience. So yeah. offering different things that are available in Tallinn is, uh, is uh, certainly important uh, to us. 
but uh, yeah there's still this kind of um, um, idea that uh, Tartu is more of an intellectual capital of Estonia and Tallinn is more of a fast-paced uh, city uh, northern nord Nordic city than, than us but uh, so you're quiet and thoughtful and they party we party. <laughs> I mean, we're a student city, so <laughs> the party scene is quite nice. Yeah, yes. uh, I think it, there has been like competition previously, yeah. but now, as a as a nation, it's more important for us to look at it together and kind yeah. of build this together, together rather than yeah. compete with it. And know? you're putting on Maria on one of the festivals as part of the European City of Culture. Tell me about what's, what are the strong points of it going to be? Mm -hmm. So next year uh, in Tartu there is happening the biggest choir music festival in Estonia that year. Um, so it's a song and dance festival that lasts a week. It starts with a dance uh, festival with more than 2,000 dancers coming together from Tartu and Tartu County uh, and it culminates with the song festival with over 10,000 singers and dancers joining forces uh, to put on this concert and in between there are many different events starting from uh, uh, church concerts to uh, paying respects to the ancestors who put, uh, started this tradition in Estonia to uh, uh, combining like different cultural, uh, different cultures, folk music, and bringing that together. So we're trying to build this uh, um, broad um, program that celebrates folk uh, music, folk dance, choir singing from different aspects, and and gives a a place for the locals to perform and and show their talents. I lived for many years in Wales, where the National Aesthetics uh, has, uh, the, the, as far, I suppose for what, 50 or 60 years now, had the great international folk dance and folk music festival, and of course of, of rare languages too. Um, and I just wondered how open will your festival be to the similar things from the rest of Europe? Um, well. The dance festival this year for the first time ever in Estonia is having like a separate um, uh, section that is for uh, Estonians who have gone abroad and started their folk dancing groups there or and also foreigners who have uh, who have wanted to learn Estonian folk dance so they will come back and they will have their own dances that they will perform as a group and this hasn't been done before so we're trying to open this culture uh, this culture scene up to the foreigners more and with the song festival the, the it is in Estonia and, uh, and uh, it is mainly for the southern Estonia to have a platform to perform because the difference between the big festivals that take place in the capital is that we let everyone come so uh, with the big festivals there's this you have to sing and you have to prove that you're you know good enough and there are certain mod groups that get to do that but with us we want to give a chance for everyone to join and participate so we built the the programs in a way that it is um, it is suitable for beginners and also more advanced groups so, so just give a, a place to come together and to celebrate and to dance and to sing and to perform and, and just be together and, and feel joy from that. And I now live in Scotland and of course the one thing that Scotland and Estonia share are the pipes uh, and the, the, there's a fine tradition there. So are you going to have any few kilts and highland dances amongst your, <laughs> your festival? Uh, there won't be highland dances, but there will be pipes at <laughs> the song festival. <laughs> Christina, tell me something about the European aspects of what you're doing, because we've heard about the national side. What about the European side of, mm -hmm. the, of the city? Well, the, uh, the artistic concept of the whole year is arts of survival. And uh, this we see is uh, something that has become uh, more relevant year by year to everybody around us in, in Estonia and Europe, in the world. And uh, uh, bringing uh, what we are going to bring from the world to Darkdo next year uh, is uh, a lot of uh, international artists and exhibitions and uh, uh, Ryo Shikeda from Japan, for example, or uh, uh, Sting is coming <laughs> to Tartu next uh, next summer. The ticket sales uh, just started, and and um, uh, we have a lot of uh, smaller scale and, and uh, medium scale corporations between our cultural organizations and their equivalents to uh, in Europe. 
So that is something that uh, this process has uh, really given uh, our cultural managers the tools, the experiences to work together with other cultural managers in Europe. So we don't want to outsource the program from Europe to just uh, bring the transplanted into into Tartu, we just uh, we really want to build the capacity of our cultural managers. You talked a bit about your theatre there with its company of dancers and yeah. drama uh, uh, theatre people and uh, opera. Are you doing any co-productions with other opera houses in Europe or dance companies in Europe? Uh, during this program uh, there isn't uh, anything uh, with, with traditional theatre but there is um, a cooperation between the Paris Philharmonics. Uh, they are performing Velia um, Dormi's uh, um, Rafat, which was performed first. Okay, forgotten peoples. Yeah, which was performed first in Paris, and now the Paris Choir is coming to Estonia and giving their first uh, open air performance of that uh, piece with an Estonian conductor in in Tartu. So there are like this uh, uh, multicultural, uh, multicultural and different countries spanning mm -hmm. um, cooperation. But finally, Christina, what do you hope is left after the? Capital Culture Year, what do you think will, should be the legacy? Uh, well, first of all, I will uh, hope that uh, all the Tartuvians will be very proud that they've had a great cultural year. I, uh, I feel like the biggest legacy will be uh, the people who have contributed to the programming of, uh, of the year, uh, the experiences, the knowledge, the networks that they gain from that. But uh, you know, going into detail, I think working with youth, uh, working with uh, new culture managers uh, to to become the the big culture managers of tomorrow. That's uh, going to be one of the legacies. And and uh, philosophically, I think that the need for uh, uh, international big cultural programming. Uh, will be very solid after this year so that the politicians will know that uh, this is something that we need to put money into it's an investment mm -hmm. to the region and uh, into well-being and uh, and the people will want it that's uh, that's what uh, i hope we will need christina maria thank you very much indeed